Good afternoon. How are you? Hi. Hello, Barbara. I see people hopping on. How are we? Doing good. We're doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> Love the art studio. Yes, yeah, it's actually Picasso. So I just got oh. off the call. I was actually, this is Picasso's actual art studio in Paris. So That's I was just thinking about crazy. Picasso today. Wow. I couldn't figure out how to put myself in black and white or I would have put it on myself on the set of Citizen Kane today. Um, uh. But I just couldn't figure out how to do it in limited time. We've been working on training a bunch of other people on how to get online. Um, mm -hmm. So how are your classes going so far? Have you had other classes? Yes, yeah, so far so good. No, actually, I'm just like finishing my other classes. Nobody else wants to do anything, so. That is unfortunate what I have found through my own department as well, which is very unfortunate because we still want to get you an education because some of the things will transfer over. For most of you, this is an elective, and so you may or may not use some of the things later on, but we still want to give you a full kind of educational experience. Our things each day will be also recorded, so if you were um, – Wi-Fi cuts out at any point. You can always go back and watch as we're moving forward. So is anyone else teaching online or are you basically just being asked to learn on your own now? I have two classes where I'm supposed to learn on my own. Okay, which two are those, Matthew? Um, I've got one of my, um, surprisingly enough, my math class. He just has like a lot of videos up on his uh, Blackboard. Are you and good in math I, to begin with, Matt? I was not, and now I am. I'm a little okay. worried to go into this without any like proper instruction, but I think yeah, that's fine. hard. And then yeah, and then my chem lab is just we get the numbers, like they just give us the numbers, and we have to do them on our own. Yeah, okay. So there's no like actual lab to do. And at that point, there's not really anything you can do because it's a safety issue. People yeah, aren't yeah. access. So that like, are you a science major, Matt? Yeah, I'm a chem major. Oh, okay, chem. Okay. What about the rest of you? Are any of you doing the online version or is it mostly learn your own now? It's all learn on my own. All yeah, of your own. This, class, this yeah. class is the learn only on one that's required me to do Zoom. Everyone okay. else uh, is basically just like, you do it on your own, we'll give you extra content, but that's it. Perfect. Are you comfortable with learning that extra content on your own? Or do you no. really need someone that's, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't. Face to face. Yeah, I Me couldn't too. learn all the way on my own as an undergraduate. I just I didn't have the study skills. Also, I didn't know how to put the things in a framework to understand it. And I was a chem major. There's no way I could have gotten chemistry online. Yeah, I learned. Uh, I failed my first year of college, so I had to learn how to do it on my own. And this isn't really a big change, but it sucks. And that's Audrey. Audrey, are are you better on your own now? Oh, definitely. I mean, I, I, not to sound arrogant, it's not coming from a place of negativity, but it's like, I learn better on my own than I do from a professor. Yeah, like it's more so going to a class, right. Going to a class is more reinforcement. Like, oh, okay, this is what I already know, but it's nice to hear it in a different phrasing or, you know, I can ask questions or I can talk to other students who kind of have similar questions or just want to discuss. It's more like critical thinking, you know, just talking and having a conversation right. and just learning on my own. But I mean, this still sucks because, like, I like going to class. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Well, we'll start here in a minute. Here, let's make sure that you all can see my screen later on. And the system has actually been pretty good so far. So let's go there. And slideshow. Professor Fazer, have you gotten a chance to hear of or watch Tiger King? I have heard of it. It is on my short list, but uh, I have not seen it yet. It's crazy. So the previews keep coming up. Yeah. yeah. That's really crazy. crazy. So you've all seen it already? <laughs> yes. Seen, uh, I have, have not. Watch it. Really Guys, go see the platform. I'm not playing. The platform on Netflix is the best thing that I've ever seen. Yeah, I saw it. It was really good. It it's so good. good. So you guys have a lot of time to actually watch yeah. videos. Yes. Yeah. We had about two weeks, but there was absolutely nothing to do. Yeah. yeah. It was the first time I used Netflix in like a month or two. I have more than enough time, and it's depressing. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I felt that. I felt that. 
see. So you all can see that screen then that's kind of blurry yeah. and everything. Yeah. Even yeah. better in the yes. background. Um, yes. How many of you have you lost your jobs? Are you at home now? Are you still working? What's the uh, financial still situation? No, I've no. lost my job completely. I don't have a job. I'm unemployed. Wow, okay. that's awful. Are you filing for benefits that are coming your way in three weeks? Correct. Yes, I am. You are. Okay, good. Actually doing you that today. About the plan. Even better. We want to make sure because the Congress did say that we're going to go into more debt, but to help those covered, those people who actually just lost their job to really no fault of their own. Mm -hmm. And what are we doing? Are we actually doing social distancing or are we staying six feet apart? Yes. Yeah, definitely. I have people All of you are. Over, Any like of you live house. with... Do any of you live with older relatives? Grandma, yeah. grandpa live with you? I have a six-year-old father who's working actually yeah. in healthcare. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. Where in healthcare? Is he at one of the hospitals? No, he's well. He's at Jackson, but he's a hyperbaric okay. nurse, so he's not like you know on the battle front scene. Yeah. But they have a lot of COVID cases already at Jackson. So yes, yeah, they do. They do. And they do think we are one of the next hotbeds. Probably not this week. Maybe not even next week, but the following week because we have a fair number of people from spring break that do not social distance. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be about a two week lag. So let's hope that doesn't happen here, but that's what seems to be happening in Louisiana right now. I did want to say uh, to whoever lost their job or just isn't in a job, um, like all the like store that reads, all of those are in desperate need of workers. Um, and it's about the two to three days to sign up. And it's a really great way to make just quick, easy cash. Uh, I do it every now and again, and it's, I mean, you can spend one day and get $50 easy. You just devote the day to it. Okay, thank you for that. Publix is also hiring. Um, a lot of restaurants are hiring for delivery right now. Uh, Walmart is hiring 5,000 people a day. So if you're willing to venture out and really need the financial aspect, there are certain industries that are doing well, particularly like grocery, healthcare, food delivery services, so those are all possibilities as well. So for those of you that are really struggling, that's a potential opportunity, at least in the short term, because it does look like we're going to be like this for at least another month, right? President Trump yesterday announced that basically he wants to keep social distancing live, or live actually all the way until April 30th. So that puts us in another two period. So yeah. let me, I want to play a video for you. Now I know one of the fun things about the class today, or one of the fun things that I like about class and then we'll talk about some of the setup after I show the video and we're waiting for a couple more people to log on, is that many of you will watch Citizen Kane, one of the most influential films of all time, and many of you won't even like it, which is an interesting conversation to have about how we have changed our filmmaking strategies in the future. Now, I'm not claiming this should be anyone's favorite film. I don't want to make that claim at all. However, I do want you to know, even if you kind of want to have an argument and hopefully have an argument later on, uh, that this is one of the three or four most important films that's ever been made. And so I'm not saying best, but when we look at influence. And so here is a yeah. list, I think this from Mojo, and oh. Mojo did their top 10 films of all time. So here's what they chose. Citizen Kane's not number one, but You'll see. So your discussion board posting that I should mention this week, which we'll talk about, is choosing a film that is more influential than Citizen Kane. I assume you've all seen Dark Knight, which is a fantastic film. You've seen, we've talked about psychos on that list. Probably most of you have seen Pulp Fiction as well. This is a tasty burger. This final video culminates our Probably everyone has seen Wizard of Oz. Yeah. by drawing from the number one or number two ranked movies oh, that's all with the wind these movies are selected based on their iconic status critical acclaim box office success and watchability star wars it's not what your film studies professor or most artsy movie critics would pick voted in droves we researched till the cows came home it's now time for the mother of all lists grab your popcorn dim the lights and and can you all hear this through your computer yeah now? Yeah. 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 Number 10. Have we Apocalypse seen Apocalypse Now? now? No. It's no. like war films. This is one of the greatest war films, one of psychological intensity ever. It's amazing. Robert Duvall and Marlon Brando in the lead roles. Apocalypse Now crackles with scene after scene of horrifically and masterfully executed death and destruction. Mirroring Joseph Conrad's novel, Heart of Darkness, 
Francis Ford Coppola's gritty, Oscar-nominated Vietnam War epic follows a group of soldiers tasked with assassinating a rogue colonel. They told me that you had gone totally insane. But the result is less than jumping up a horror space adventure and more Whoever chimed in, actually, you're, we can all hear your speaker. Turn that off. Sorry. In Kansas anymore. All right. Number nine, The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Have we all seen The Wizard of Oz? No. 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 <laughs> it's on every year on TV. Backbone. This Technicolor masterpiece. I mean, I've seen plenty of parodies of it. Tell the coming of age story of a young Kansas girl who dreams of a land somewhere over the rainbow. Oh, I really like learning about Judy Garland and like the production of like making the film in general how like yeah. messed up people were. It was messed up. This is why we have Hollywood costumes today. It's this film invented the costume industry. And people that went to the movie didn't even like it when they saw it in 1939. It was too advanced for them. All parents recommend to their children and enjoy watching with them. Oh God! Is this watch Mojo? This is on Mojo. Yes. So this is their top ten list uh, that viewers voted after watching. So it's not necessarily the most influential, but it's what viewers voted. So it's interesting to see the range of time periods. Have we seen Gone with the Wind? Yes. No. Yeah. No. Civil War love. Considered one of the greatest love stories ever. This is still one of the films my wife hasn't seen. So I brought this one home for us to watch when she's on hiatus from FIU. This is when it's all over. I'll never be hungry again. Winning a record number of Oscars, including an historic one for African American actress Hattie McDaniel. That was the first African American ever to win an Oscar. She plays the Mammy figure. It's from 1939. Ultimately, with all its romance and heartbreak. And this Tom made Clark Gable a sex symbol for about 30 years in Hollywood. Exactly, but here I don't give a damn. I'm going to go pinch a loaf. When I come back. This is all gone, right? Number seven. The Shawshank. Have we seen Shawshank? No. Yes. Yeah. No. Yes. This is the best active yes. movies you will ever see. So this is a great film, but it's a great film because of the acting. It's impeccable. Jail for his wife's murder. Man, I'm too afraid. Wife killing but rather than being a tale of despair and hopelessness, it's a story of fortitude, friendship, fidelity, and of course, redemption. It was like some beautiful bird flapped into our trap. Freddie Freeman is the best narrator uh, <laughs> ever. Every last man in Shawshank. With Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman working together to bring this story to life. This Frank Darabont film was not a runaway box office hit, but its positive reviews, eventual popularity, and seven Academy Award nominations ensured its spot in cinema history. And still arguably the best superhero movie ever, when we look at the style of the film, the acting, many people would put this as number one, The Dark Knight. This second film and uh, the action could have been a little better. <laughs> second best Joker? Who's the best Joker? Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill. They're two completely Jokers. You can't compare them. He's only been in the animation industry. Maybe. You can say he's the best animated and... and Heath Ledger's the best live action. Well, I will tell you, scholars overwhelmingly agree with you. When we talk about Joker's being the best, he comes in, Heath Ledger right now, even with, with Joaquin Phoenix just winning the Academy Award, he comes in 96% as the best Joker ever. So it's not even close when we evaluate. And next week, we'll teach you how to evaluate acting. That's our next class, where we'll look at the performance here. My favorite all time five, film, Star Wars. Star Wars. I grew five, up loving this film. I was seven, of course, when it came out. Borrowing from my aunt every time I want over. 
for her computer. Power said she had it on VHS. Considered by many as the strongest of the three original films, Empire is not only a for the eyes, with its expensive and so if you want to see how to write up this week's discussion board posting, this is the movie that I chose to say is more important than Citizen King that you can use as a model. And I don't know if I agree with that, but I had to make an argument. Innovative and creative, this chapter in the life of Luke Skywalker and friends is epic filmmaking at its finest. That boy is our last hope. No. There is a gun. Yeah, the other that you didn't train. Sometimes. We've talked about part of this film, Psycho, Psycho particularly the shower scene, which is often considered the best three minutes of film ever. As memorable and influential as Alfred Hitchcock's shower incident, with its many cuts, many angles, and subtle hints of violence and new. 72 cuts in three minutes and 18 seconds. But to downplay the rest of Psycho would be fatal. This thriller is Hitchcock's masterwork. Well, a boy's best friend is his mother. Critics were initially divided in their opinions on the film, but Psycho eventually earned four Oscar nominations. Shifting the norms of acceptable on-screen violence and sexuality, this movie surprised Have most of you everyone seen the entire Psycho? But even if you know the yes. scene for yeah. Psycho, uh, there might be half the They'll see. They'll see and they'll know. And they'll say. Even this ending is the one we talked about so well, where, where they use the dissolve. Probably most of you have seen Pulp Fiction. Number three, Pulp Fiction. You've got to have an opinion. I mean, do you think that's going to be the dialogue here that really carries this movie? Many people still say this is um, Quentin Tarantino's best movie of all time. But film scholars are actually split because of, he's done so much in recent with the films. More than that, Quentin Tarantino's Oscar-winning Pulp Fiction is driven by subtle, articulate, and pop culture-heavy dialogue. That's what do they call it? They call it Royale Witch. Royale Witch. What do they call it? Big Mac. Big Mac's a Big Mac, but they call it Love Big Mac. The nonlinear plot follows an interwoven group of colorful characters in intricate detail. With such dark humor, you'll laugh in spite of yourself. If you're all right, say something. Something. With a soundtrack that punctuates the mood and sound bites you'll be quoting for years, Pulp Fiction has everything necessary to make you watch it over and over. And you will know my name is the law when I lay my vengeance upon thee. No, Mojo did not put Susan Kane as number one, but it came in at number two. So any guesses on what number one would be then? It's a God wonderful Father. movie. Director was Which one? To what is now Godfather. Greatest film Let's take a look. It'll be here in a moment. Kane, Wells did exactly the other that. film they put at what number one is the one that if Citizen Kane is listed as number one, yeah. most people put well, this film as number directed. one. They go back and forth between one and two. Film, and has multiple Academy Awards. Movie, and and one of you wrote about as this film for your discussion board already. A million dollars next year. You know, Mr. Thatcher, at the rate of a million dollars a year, I have to close this place in 60 years. To create his Oscar-winning masterpiece, Wells employed innovative and groundbreaking cinematic and storytelling techniques, creating a layered film that appeals to both cinema separately in sharp focus. It is estimated that as much as 50% of the film required special effects work of one sort or another. And so that's where we can actually begin our conversation. So I've given you all the reasons why Citizen Kane is one of the most influential films of all time. Your job this week will be come up with something that is more influential. Now, I've chosen Star Wars. Someone else has already chosen to make the argument for Godfather. Remember, every person has to choose a different film. So the earlier you start your project, the earlier you get to claim your film and then build upon your argument. But as you're doing it, please remember, you've got to argue what four points What are the four innovation. main ways we evaluate? Okay, innovation, technical innovation. How much Aesthetics. money you made? How much money? Aesthetic. Aesthetics. The impact, cultural impact. impact and the cultural, cultural impact. impact. Now, for most films, you'll only be able to argue three or four. We're saying this were the most important, or two or three. 
for most films, there's only going to be two or three. We made this argument here, and we said it wasn't even commercially successful. There's a reason why, but because the impact was so large. So the question for you is, what other films are out there that you might want to consider? Like, I think someone has already chosen. I think the two films I've already looked at that people have turned in and did an all right job. They needed to actually cover a little bit more with all four categories. But one of them, someone's already chose Avengers Endgame. And one of them, someone has already chosen the first Godfather. So what other films are out there that you could potentially make an argument that, hey, this is so influential like Citizen Kane or more into it? Somebody, can somebody do Godfather Part 2? Can some what? Can somebody do Godfather Part 2? You can, but you have to make an argument that it's Godfather Part 2 that's the one that sets the stage. So because we're only looking at individual films. That's why when I chose Star Wars, someone else could do Empire Strikes Back, but they would have to make a different argument than what I made. Yeah, so has, absolutely you can use those. Has someone done Jaws? No one has selected Jaws yet. It's just those three that I know that have been selected. Star Wars, Godfather, and um, was the other one I mentioned? Star Wars, Godfather, oh, and Avengers Endgame. Avengers. Yeah. Game. Oh, okay. So anyone have a film that they would like to put out you're worried about saying the film, someone else will steal it before you get there. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna say it. Okay. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but I like the idea of doing like a horror movie. I'm considering um psycho because I really like psycho. Okay. And I and yeah, make the case on why psycho is so important versus any other horror films or right. what it does for the horror film genre. That's just different. Right, definitely. I think it has a large, it has, it had a big impact on just horror in general. So it totally think, does. Or you can think yeah. of any of the films we've talked about earlier. Yeah. Like in the Sight and Sound film, Metropolis came in four or five. You might choose a Pulp Fiction, but again, you're arguing from those four categories. So that's what we're doing for this week. A um, couple things as set up. Now, um, I will be looking at your notes on the top 100 films, but I'm not going to look at them piecemeal. So you have basically two weeks to finish those up. You should be on about 70 now. And so if you want credit or any credit, you'll turn in the, the remaining one ending of the 100 films in week 15. So we're in week 13 now. You'll post that in. There's a discussion board in week 15, which is our last week where we do discussion board. So we will have three online classes we'll have today. Next time we'll talk about acting. And the time after that, we're gonna talk about the great directors. Who is a better director than who? Is Spielberg better than Tarantino? Is better than Orson Welles? Is better than Alfred Hitchcock? So the last class that we have online. Week 16 then will be your um, final exam week. And it's up to you if you wanna to work together or independently and send those to me, that it matters not to me. But remember, that's where you're going to take 10 films off of our top 100 list and make an argument why you should remove these two, 10 films based upon the four criteria we just discussed, and what 10 new films you want to put on that are better than the 10 films you took off. So that's really kind of how we wrap out the, the class. For those who have not gotten an email from me or haven't read the email yet, as I said, as soon as you get through the storyboard part of your um, movie project, because we have social distancing that's taking place, you don't need to complete the end of the film. In fact, we want to keep you apart so you don't spread corona to your family or to anyone else within the process. So we're only going to make it up through the storyboard. I think everyone but one group has gotten me their storyboard already. So does anyone have any outstanding questions or issues? Otherwise, we'll end a couple minutes early. And I'll see you next week to talk about acting. I want to ask, how, do, how can we confirm our spot with the, the movies? Like, you know, the top, the top. If you know what movie you want to go and make right now, go into Blackboard and write down whatever movie it is. Without making an argument, I won't grade it. I will just wait for the argument to come in. They're due on Thursday, so it's only waiting a couple of days. So you could say, all right, for this one, like I have someone who's already chosen what they wanted to do for both this week and next week. Um, and so that's just waiting for them to finish up the project. So you can go in and claim a film and then go back and edit your own posting. Okay. Yeah. Um, what if what if someone submits the actual film with everything being done prior to the person who They'll have to do it over because your responsibility is that everyone gets to choose one film. So you got to know what other people are already responding back to. So you right. want to okay. go and make sure that you are only responding yeah. back to one. Um, I have a question for Jordan Munoz. He wants to know if um, if I still have all my free passes, can I use them in some discussions and how I know my passes have been used? If you look at passes, the way that it works 
is that you will have zeros. So wherever you have a zero, that is one of your free late passes. The, the system, the computer system automatically skips the first five zeros. And after that, moves on. And so if you have not used up your five zeros, you can use them on any of the discussion boards or quizzes that are left. That's completely up to you. But just don't go over five zeros in the grade book. Awesome. Uh, I, have I have a question about um, the past two weeks. Um, were we supposed to keep up with the quizzes and discussion boards? No, that was completely up to you. And okay. so the way that it works, if you go into Blackboard right now, there is no longer a week 11 or 12, the two weeks that we skipped and canceled. Week 11 was actually on Citizen Kane. We just did that. Week 12 was on acting. We're going to do that. We're going to put all of the director stuff together in one week. And one week was going to be the screening of your films, which make it easy. You're not doing the film, so we won't do that. We'll do that week. We'll talk about acting and then talk about the final exam, which will be your following week. So we really will cover almost everything except you creating your own film. So we'll be right on schedule now. So the discussion boards are just uh, going to be stuff that we're going to be doing um, in class, the virtual stuff. Uh, well, we won't be doing the discussion boards. You still have to do out of class like you were doing before, right? Because we just talked about the one that's due on Thursday that you're going to write about a more influential film than Citizen Kane. So you will absolutely be doing that out of class. The only one that you have the option of doing as a group or out of class will be the final exam on your own later on. Okay. And that's week 16. All right. Okay. Um, excuse me, Professor. So did we have to do the discussion boards for the last two weeks? You could or could not. So if you didn't do them for the last two weeks, you'll be doing them this week. As I mentioned, the week 11 oh, okay. Kane discussion board is now the week 13. So if you go into week 13 all the way at the bottom, it's the Citizen Kane discussion board. Okay. And next week's will be on acting. Actually, next week's, if you want to claim a film as well, as long as we're thinking about it, next week's has got a, is a weird but fun discussion board. We're going to talk about great acting next week, but we're also going to be talking about bad acting. And so next week, your discussion board posting is kind of fun. You have to choose someone who, with, who did a terrible job acting in an otherwise great film. So you got to choose a great film that has one character that is an awful actor. For example, don't choose Twilight. That's a terrible film with terrible acting. Sorry, Kristen Stewart or Kristen Stewart fans. Like next week for bad acting, I chose Keanu Reeves in The Matrix. Damn, right. I was gonna pick that. Man, if you could choose, if you imagine putting Christopher, imagine putting almost any Robert Downey Jr., anyone who can act in Keanu, Keanu Reeves when he's excited. Keanu Reeves when he solves the problem of the, of the Matrix. <laughs> Keanu Reeves when he's reading a book. Now I make fun of his acting, and yet. He is one of the nicest, wonderful men in Hollywood. He's amazing. Very yeah. generous. I'm not making fun of his personality at all. Just that he's basically got very lucky with his acting roles. He doesn't really act. Go look at John Wick. It is the exact great movie again. Cast for Keanu Reeves, who doesn't actually have to act. Keanu Reeves, after his dog dies. Right? It's the same everywhere. And you will find, you know, you can do... Look at Mark Hamill in Star Wars, one of my favorite films of all time. He sucked in the first Star Wars. Take that. <laughs> he was awful. Watch him. He's like, I'm going and I, I want to go to college. And I'm like, come on. Like, and when I was a seven-year-old boy, that was awesome. Now that I'm a pro film professor, I'm like, oh, that's awful. <laughs> Have you seen the uh, video of uh, Keanu Reeves playing with puppies? While I have not. On I will actually have to watch that now. <laughs> I tell you, he's a wonderful, wonderful man. Just mm -hmm. he has gotten the exact right breaks in Hollywood. And sometimes that happens. Kristen Stewart's a terrible actress. And yeah. she's a multi million. Don't believe me, go watch anything she's ever been in. And she yeah. got remarkably better at the end of Twilight Four. Thank God. Because the first one is almost unwatchable. Mm -hmm. Right? The two it of them love is comical. Yeah. Really the books are better, I promise. Yeah, they okay. are. Well, I will never find out, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I will take your word for it. When I do retire, I will finish reading all the Harry Potter books because I've, yes. I've read the first one. It's a fantastic. I just don't have time. When I retire, yeah. that's the first book series I'm reading. Yes. All right, any other questions we have? Professor, I have a question on Two. the notes for um, the hundred top 100. Yep. What are we submitting? Is this like a discussion board that we're doing? Well, it's listed as a discussion board so you can download it. So 
as I have you watch movies or read about from the book throughout the semester, I have you basically figure out what's new and innovative and how does this particular film impact the world at large. So you should have been doing that all week long. That's what or all week, all year long. That's what I've been collecting about every two or three weeks when I've seen you in class. And so we're up to about 65 right now. So you've got two weeks to finish off that list and send that in. So if you do not finish it off, you should send in whatever you have, because that is, if you think about it, 15% of your grade and absolutely think through, all right, what's new and innovative about this film? There should be no problem with Citizen Kane right now, right? We've done Metropolis. We've actually covered about 30 of them in class. Um, and so the other 30 are ones you've done from readings and other things outside of, or readings or videos that you've watched. Um, that is going to be the basis of your final exam. So the better it is to do it, get it in for week 15, because then the final exam is, hey, which 10 can I remove? And what other 10 are more important because you have to swap one out for the other? And that's what your final exam is, making the list more difficult for the next person. Professor, excuse me, someone asked in the chat, do we have to turn in the notes um, online now virtually or? Yeah, they'll come in all online. Those 100 notes will come in during week 15, two weeks from today, April 13th. Can I so the discussion them? board already set up for you. Can I submit them as pictures? Because um, I'm yeah, you can submit. If you've been writing on, absolutely. You can submit them as pictures. I have access to PDF and all that format. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So do we send it to you separately or do we send it to you all at once for the separate? All at once you can send it into a discussion board. It's a, there's a discussion board that you can emulate and put whatever you have in. I, for those of you that have already shown me a bunch of the notes, I only need to see the new ones. So for some of you, if I've already seen up through 50, I only need to see the second 50. I have a list of who's shown me what. For some of you that have already showed me 60, I only need to see the last 40. So I only need to see wherever you left off at. Okay. Is there a way we can check, like if we don't remember where we left off that you can yeah. tell us? Uh, I can do that. Let's do that next time. I can actually show you um, because I'd have to, I can't do that while I'm on with you because I have to have access to Blackboard, which mm -hmm. I can't do it. I'm worried about the system collapsing. Uh -huh. But that, otherwise, I do have a list of that actually at home. So I will print out the list and be able to tell you next time. That okay. would be great. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, won't, I can't tell you specifically all the different films I saw, but I yeah. can tell you where I saw too. Yep. Okay. Other questions we have? Yes. Professor, is there going to be um, any curve implemented for this class? No. The, the curve okay. is already set up as, the, there's remember, there's 1,100 points. So you get five skips. If you don't use the five skips, oh, okay, okay. Don't right, you get okay. B, that's built into the system already. Got it. Okay. All right. Whatever our lowest grades are, those five skips will be implemented into those. Well, here's the deal. If you have five zeros and have done everything, it just takes the five lowest grades off. It's a mathematical formula. Okay. Um, if you have not, or I'm sorry, if you have not had the five zeros, it will take off the lowest five grades. So it depends okay. on, you know, if you have, three skips and two low grades, it'll take off the lowest of the five. So it'll take off the three zeros and the other two. And that will be the percentage it figures out for you. So the okay. system is already set up to do that. Very other cool. questions? No, All not right. really. Go, Go party, get out of here. I'll see you next week when we talk about great acting and Keanu Reeves. <laughs> That's right. Bye. Bye. Bye guys. Bye. 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 Bye.